Well, hello. It's in the trees. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin and today we're continuing our album listen of Nursery Crime by Genesis with two songs today, uh, For Absent Friends and The Return of the Giant Hogweed. I hope that you guys are having an amazing, absolutely fantastic, wonderful night, day, morning, whatever time it is. I hope that it's a good one. Last time on listening to the musical box, I liked it, but I wasn't captivated by it. I, I wasn't I wasn't quite there yet. So I took some time and I watched a few live versions of it. Um, not only a little bit of older footage from when Peter Gabriel's in the band, but also Steve Hackett's uh, reinterpretation of the song and his life playing of the song. And I liked it so much better. I liked it so much better, especially Steve Hackett's um, version of it. Anyways, let's let's get on with the show. You guys can join me on Twitter. You guys can join me in the comments down below. I cannot thank you enough for all the support that you've given me on this channel, for watching, liking, and of course, most importantly, sharing the videos with people you think might enjoy the channel. Uh, let's do it. This is Four Absent Friends, of course, and we're going to let it lead into uh, Giant Hogweed. So let's, let's do it. Here, here we go. <laughs> what an awkward transition. Sunday at six when they closed both the gates A widow pair still sitting there Wonder if they're late for church and it's cold So they fasten their coats and cross their grass They're always lost Passing by the path See a small girl on her way home with a pram. Inside the archway, the priest greets them with a courteous nod. He's close to God.
You know, one of my little dreams, little dreams that I've always had, was to start like this nice, beautiful garden. I now have no interest in starting this garden. <laughs> so with For Absent Friends, we get a nice, nice rest after the powerful musical box. Uh, Hackett Collins singing lead, which from what I read, this is his first time singing a song by himself, and I think he does a very nice job. Sometimes Collins and Gabriel are kind of indistinguishable from each other. Like, they're, I think they're very similar, very similar in tone. Not boring at all. This is just a nice, uh, very relaxed and toned down song. I love the message, actually, in the song, and I love the lyrics here. Four absent friends, friends and family that are no longer there, you're still here, they're not. Um, maybe they've passed away, maybe they, we've just lost contact with them, whatever the case may be. But I like how the story is about this widowed pair um, watching time pass around them. I love where it says uh, inside the archway as they're going to church, uh, the priest greets him with a courteous nod. He's close to God. He's close to death. Looking back at days of four instead of two. I feel like it's obvious, but I'm not... <laughs> I feel like it's obvious, but I actually don't know what they mean. They're not necessarily married to each other, right? They're widowed. So um, maybe it was like all of them, like like both couples together. Days of four of them instead of just the two of them left. I think that this is a very quaint, uh, important message. It's very poignant. How do you say that word? Poignant? Poignant? I know what, I know what it means, but that's what I... <laughs> poignant. Poignant. Sounds French. Uh, but the message is very poignant. <laughs> it's about the passing of time, the things that you've lost, but also reflecting on the things that you may have gained. I think the message in the song is the best thing, along with Collins and Hackett's playing. Beautiful. Let's get to Hogweed. Ooh, let's get to Hogweed. Um, remember that movie that came out years ago? I think it was called like The Happening or something. And the big twist in it was that the plants were killing people. I, I get it. I get it. The drumming in this song is off of the chart. The drumming is crazy. So snappy, poppy, I love it. Not poppy like, you know, Ariana Grande. I mean, poppy like the snare. What a great opening to this song. This, the whole first third of this song, I love it. I think it is a great opener, really good. Listen to that swing. Yeah, that's good. Gabriel with the unnatural raspiness and that, that yelling maniacal sound. I love it. Everything is really good. The organ and the guitar riffing. I love that riff that you hear. Bum, ba, ba, bum. It's, it's a little, it's a little jazzy. Like, not like smooth jazz, but there's a little like maybe soft machine kind of jazz in there. Not Kenny G, but like soft machine. You know, like there's, there's a tiny, some, there's something in there. I feel like this song is the Get Em Out by Friday of the album, possibly. I mean, I've only listened to three songs on the album, so I don't know. But it has that funny message, uh, the funny story, the music that bounces around a lot, but I don't think ever too much. And none of it is taken so seriously. I know I've said it like just a few seconds ago, but I really love the dynamic between uh, Banks and Hackett here. I really love their riffs. Strike by night. Okay, not like that, but like. Alright, listen to the way. I, I wasn't close when I sang it, but but I love that part. And then it quiets down, but the drums do not quiet down. Phil is still bringing a lot of subtleties in the back there. Strong, powerful, fuzzy tones throughout the whole thing. There's a nice distortion uh, being played throughout the whole song, whether that is from uh, Hackett or whether that's from Rutherford. I'm not sure, but it's really nice the way that it carries through. And I don't feel like it ever becomes monotonous, it never becomes boring or overplayed. And then what a beautiful section here, uh, getting about a little about three quarters of the way through. The piano running up and down, uh, guitar, the drum hits, and then you get the guitar that like starts to kind of provide a nice uh, solo there in the back. 
The whole thing sounds very progressive, and I mean, that may come across somewhat obvious, but I don't think so. Because this sounds like a band that's trying to experiment, that's trying to try new things, instead of getting stuck in a rut and saying, you know what, we do this really well, let's just keep doing it. This song sounds to me like they did do something really well, the first three quarters of the song, and then they said, you know what, let's kind of keep, let's kind of keep playing around with it. What else can we do with it? And as a lot of you guys have mentioned, they were very young around this time when they made this album. I think that you guys said around 21. I mean, what, what were we doing at 21? What were you doing? What was I doing? Not, not this. <laughs> this comes across as a very concentrated effort uh, from a young band, a group of very young people who were very musically minded and had the same ideas and knew what they wanted to put together. And they excelled at it. Even though this is the first album in which we have the complete uh, Genesis band, as most of us probably know. You can kind of hear in their personalities through the music that they're very serious about the music, but not so serious. I mean, look at look at the story, you know, you know? And at the same time, they're showing the world that they can write stories like Musical Box, like Return of the Giant Hogweed, that are very tongue-in-cheek, they're very humorous, they're not taken seriously, but at the same time, they can write serious messages like we just heard with For Absent Friends. And they can write them really well. And there's, it's like a slight weirdness to the vocals and everything. I think it matches the story really well. I think, I actually really like this song. I, I like this one. Do, does everyone else like this song a lot? Cause I actually really enjoy this one. And it's exciting for me because I get to see like the rough beginnings of the band. And I don't mean rough as in bad, I just mean rough as in they're not quite refined yet. They're still doing amazing things, but they're not polished yet. And to me, moving from here onto Foxtrot, and like, to me, that's like, you know, that's this, but polished. Not worse or better, just different. And let's get into the lyrics of uh, <laughs> the giant hogweed. Run, nothing can stop them. Around every river and canal, their power is growing. Stamp them out, we must destroy them. They infiltrate each city with their thick, dark, warning odor. The hogweed is on the attack. Now, whether this is just a fantastical story or if it's uh, relating to something that's happening in real life, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that this is really funnily written. Botanical creatures stirs, or seeking revenge. Royal Beast did not forget he came home to London and made a present of the hogweed to the Royal Gardens of Kew. See, they're infiltrating. These hogweeds are sneaky. They're like actual weeds. I mean, what can you say about the lyrics? I mean, all I can say with confidence is that the songs I've listened to have definitely lived up to the name of the title of the album, Nursery Crime, taking nursery rhymes, fairy tales, fantastical stories, and putting a dark, funny spin on them. But I guess it's not really a spin because that's kind of always what they've been. I don't know. Anyways, I enjoyed the song. <laughs> um, of course, I want to know what you guys think. Do you like this song? Is this song better than the musical box? Is the musical box the peak of the album? Did they peak in the first track? I don't know. I got a few more to go. You can join me on Twitter. You can join me in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you and your families are doing well, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.